Never cry over spilled milk. If you not only first imagine in your head a person who was crying over spilled milk, but also perhaps saw the color of that person's t-shirt and what shoes they were wearing and what kind of milk they had and where they dropped it and in uh, the street perhaps and uh, what the weather was like. Well, welcome to visual spatial intelligence, visual spatial intelligence, the power of uh, images. We live in a world that is dominated by language and words. And sorry, you drew the short end of the stick. If you are a visual spatial thinker, people might think you're a bit weird. People might think that you're stupid, slow, <laughs> absent-minded, and that you have poor concentration. But through this, your intention, your attention is not geared towards words and language. Instead, you tune in more to visual stimulation and Turns out there is not a lot of that in work or in learning or in school today. So are you a visual spatial thinker? These are my five tricks to help you find out if you have high visual spatial intelligence. First of all, you have visual spatial intelligence if you have trouble listening to other people. Imagine a teacher is trying to explain to you how to do a task, how to solve an equation, how to understand history or Napoleon Bonaparte or whatever it is that they are trying to tell you. A lot of the time visual spatial thinkers don't need to be taught through words but through images. They need to they need show, not tell. They need to be able to draw it up for themselves in their head. They need to have images or mental associations, concepts to help them navigate what they're learning. A lot of time, visual spatial thinkers find it hard to pay attention when other people are telling them a story. If there's just words and if there are minimal amounts of facial expressions to observe, minimal amounts of gestures with the hand, or if there is lack of... Uh, uh, actual experience or uh, evidence or things that they can touch or hold or see, a lot of time it's going to go over their heads. Don't worry. It might not be that you're stupid. It might not mean that you're inattentive in general. It could just mean that people are trying to communicate to you in a different language. If people try to communicate to you primarily in abstract jargon and words and not in examples, images, and things that promote visual stimulation, you're out of luck. <laughs> Second, you're a visual spatial thinker if you have trouble communicating your thoughts. Do you find it hard to explain what it is that you see inside your own mind? Is it hard for you to put words on all the visual impression that you have? Do people find it hard to follow your train of thought? A lot of time when visual spatial thinkers explain themselves, they do so through images and visual explanations rather than words. Instead of telling the story of Titanic, they say the movie with the ship that sunk. A lot of time when talking about Forrest Gump, they'll talk about the guy that was running and running and running and never stopped. The visual impressions guide their primary thought and that is how they primarily access their memories. A lot of time as a visual thinker in conversation, it can be difficult. A lot of time it's that you have to actually put a lot of effort into actually uh, finding the right words and the right way to explain what you're thinking about so that other people can understand what you're saying. If you just said Titanic from the beginning, they might immediately ca catch on to what you were saying. If you would have used abstract jargon and if you would have used it in a precise way and more literally, people would have understood it perfectly clear. But because you use images, they have to actually go into their visual spatial part of the head and they have to actually decode what you're saying and say, okay, how does that actually connect to uh, Titanic? And how does what movie does that actually fit with? And how does that actually relate to what we we're talking about? And for them, that can appear jumbled and weird. So now I have a theory. My theory is that visual spatial intelligence is related to a particular form of intuition. Yeah, intuition can be divided into two forms, literal intuition and visual in in intuition. Now, some of you are visual intuitives and some of you are literal intuitives. 
And while literal intuitives might enjoy wordplay and language and find a fascination with learning to speak and communicate, visual intuitives might find more of a fascination with art and more artistic means of self-expression. So if you want to know more about that, and if you're fascinated with personality psychology, click the subscribe button and hopefully you'll find out more soon. Number three, you are a visual spatial thinker if you use a lot of emojis and GIFs. So it's GIF, not J-I-F, or what is <laughs> not GIF, I don't know. Uh, anyways, visual st spatial thinkers, they love visual stimuli. And well, emojis and GIFs are definitely part of that kind of visual stimuli. So not only do visual thinkers love to use emojis, but they love to receive them. And while words might spark medium activity in your mind, often a good placed image or a reaction photo or meme can spark fireworks. So if you like memes, if you like GIFs, if you like emojis, and if you use a lot of them, and if they help you, well, you might be a visual spatial thinker. A lot of time, visual spatial thinkers want to have visual stimuli and they prefer when either people use images to explain themselves through online communication or if people use words that have visual connotations. So if people can explain a story like, you know, when you're reading a book and the book talks about how green the grass was and the street and the people on the road, that's visual spatial explanations. When a book is talking about uh, dialogue and the, is purely going through and is basically talking about, okay, uh, he said this and then she said that and then this happened and then that happened without any visual explanation, it's harder to follow it and it's less interesting. And turns out different people relate to this in different ways. Number four, you struggle to remember names. You know, in conversation, how it's difficult to <laughs> communicate. A lot of time, visual think thinkers can also struggle to remember names. When asked, for example, for your favorite movie, it might be hard to choose. How do I explain what movie I like? Suddenly your mind goes blank. You can't think of a single movie at all. You can't think of the name of a single person. You can't think of uh, <laughs> uh, the name of a single event. You don't know how to start <laughs> or where to begin. It's like you're starting in the wrong end. People are asking you for the favorite name of your favorite song and you just go into your head and the only thing you can see is like the images or the associations that the song made you feel and you can't remember the lyrics a lot of time visual spatial thinkers struggle to remember lyrics when singing have people always complained that you keep singing the wrong words in a song <laughs> do people say that you never remember the exact words or that were used do people say it's annoying because you can't remember the right word of the movie or the right name of the person you were talking to well, you might be a visual spatial thinker. However, visual aids help here. If you can Google it and look up different movies and see the, what the covers looked like, if you can go through Spotify and see all the different things that are out there and you can say, okay, that's the one I like. <laughs> that's usually how it works. Number five, you might be a visual spatial thinker if you have thought that you have ADD or ADHD. Now, let's be clear here. You can still have ADD or ADHD. You can still have general attention related difficulties in general, not just on a literal sense, but also in a visual sense. But turns out, you know, there's lots of people out there that are literal thinkers that struggle to perceive visual stimulation. A lot of people can't see the color of a person's shirt inside their own mind. A lot of people can't experience or know what the street looked like or picture in their head a purple ice bear or polar bear. They can't uh, go in and see these things that you can and they can't do it for as long. A lot of uh, literal thinkers find it hard to pay attention to visual stimulation and images for a long time. Art bores them. Why should they just watch something they need to have an explanation for? So it might not be that you have ADD or ADHD at all. It might only be that you lack attention for literal things. 
If you lack attention for literal things, but have attention for visual things, you might just be perfectly normal. You might still have struggles, but it might not be ADD. A lot of people think they have ADD or ADHD because they've always been told in school and in class that they need to pay more attention, that they need to listen, look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> but when you're a visual thinker, you might find yourself daydreaming, you might go away, you might look in a distance when they're talking to you. It's not that they, you're not listening. A lot of time you're just listening to them on a visual channel, <laughs> but it's that uh, you just pay your attention differently. Now, what can we do to help visual thinkers fit in better in our society? Well, first I think we should adjust our school system and teaching methods to incorporate more visual material, make more room for art and visual spatial learning styles. Today you walk into a class and you end up listening to the teacher talk for 60 minutes about history, but what if instead you were given more <laughs> visual images and more examples from that place and from that time of uh, time and drawings that explained uh, what the king might have looked like and where it, the battle took place and if you could use and incorporate those techniques I think a lot of visual spatial thinkers would find more motivation and more energy from being in school and they would find it a lot easier to understand what they were doing there. We could also actually change our language and math system to be more symbol-based and image-based. A lot of time, technical jargon is alienating for a lot of people. Technical jargon, words that are empty and lack visual connotations. If we find ourselves retreating purely to technical jargon, we might find ourselves missing out on or uh, struggling to actually picture or understand what things actually are and what they actually look like. A symbolical language or a more visual communication style might really help. And finally, why not invent a GIF and emoji keyboard? I mean, there's a keyboard for letters, but why don't we have a keyboard for emojis and for GIFs? If it was, would be possible to just pick from your favorite emojis directly from a keyboard, yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, finally, if you want to know more about visual thinkers, leave a like, and if this video gets 200 likes, I would love to make a video sharing more about this. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you all in the next video.